Jared Poland from Photo.com and this is your Photo News Fix from Paris in the Eiffel Tower, you know. Now let's send it back to Jared in, in the past for your fix. This fix is brought to you by Artlist. If you've ever wondered where your favorite creators find fresh, unique music and sound effects for their videos, wonder no more because they're probably using Artlist at this point. And so are all the new creators that you don't know of yet. They're using Artlist as well. With over 22,000 quality songs and 27,000 sound effects, you're never gonna run out of unique and fresh songs and sounds. And guess what? It's super easy to find exactly what you're looking for. You can search for songs by mood, video theme, genre, instrument, and much more. And when it comes to sound effects, you get everything from epic transitions to water to fire and even the wonderful sounds of boings and dings. For example, I'm in Paris right now, and what's more Paris than this? Oh, oh sorry, I meant, I, meant, I meant this song. Yep. Both the sound effect and the music came from Artless. There's so much to choose from and it's super easy to find something great for you. For more information and to get two months free when you sign up for a year membership, head on over to bit.ly slash fro artlist. First up, as you can tell from my intro, I'm in Paris. Better place to dream. But I wasn't in Paris when I filmed this because I, I'm filming it earlier or, or right now. When will then be now? Anyway, while I've been traveling, Sigma has announced not one. Not two, but three new DN lenses. These nuts. DN once again stands for digital native, AKA lenses that were redesigned from the ground up for a mirrorless camera. How do these nuts taste? The three lenses are all a part of Sigma's contemporary line with two of them being full frame and one being for a cropped sensor camera. The two full frame lenses are the 17 millimeter F4 and the 50 millimeter F2 with the 23 F1.4 being for cropped sensor sensor cameras, giving you a roughly 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 45 millimeter equivalent. Sounds weird, but it does make sense. These lenses will be available for Sony's E-mount and the 23 1.4 will also be available on Fuji's X-mount and X is still not gonna give it to you, especially if you shoot Fuji. Break bread with the now there's no word on if we will see lenses come in the Nikon Z mount, but it would be nice since they are priced fairly well. Now it's $599 for the 17, $639 for the 50, and $549 for the 23 millimeter. These lenses will be available in April for Sony E mount with the X mount 23 millimeter coming this summer. Oh yeah, I almost forgot all three of these lenses are gonna be a part of the Mount Alliance. and you thought I would forget. Next up, Canon celebrates 20 consecutive years as number one shareholder of the global interchangeable lens digital camera market. 20. Now, if my math is correct, and I'm not sure that it is, 20 years takes us back to 1987. No. Jesus, 20 years ago is actually 2003. You got old. Now, 20 years ago, Canon released the Digital Rebel, which wasn't fast or anything, but it was a 6.3 megapixel camera and the first DSLR priced under $1,000. And now 20 years later in 2023, they continue to release interchangeable lens cameras, but now in the form of mirrorless cameras. Now this all sounds well and good, but I wanna revisit a specific statement. Canon Inc. is celebrating that the company's interchangeable lens digital cameras, digital SLR and mirrorless cameras, have maintained the number one share of the global market for 20 consecutive years from 2003 to 2022. What are you going with this Ikea boy? A anyone else notice that, that one annotation after years? Now let's see what that annotation says. It says, based on a Canon survey. Hmm, is that like me saying I am the number one photographer in the world because my mom told me so, which she didn't because she's dead, but if she were alive, she'd probably say it? Too soon, too soon. Phone call. Hello, mom, is that is that you? I've got so much to tell you. No dumbass, it's not your mom, it's Greta. I just wanted to let you know that you suck. How, 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 how dare you? You crying, boy? 
can get you a Whamburger and some french fries. Now, I'm not sure what the survey actually consists of. The survey set? But if I had to guess, it's probably based on NPD sales data and other factors that are beyond me. But if you look at what Canon has done over the last 20 years, it's probably a true statement. Just hard to quantify when they say, internal survey. Bonjour! The next Raw Talk that is coming out on Friday will be a special edition one that I record in Paris. You're in Paris now, baby. Hopefully, because I haven't recorded it yet. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you haven't listened just yet, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash podcast to get caught up on past episodes and just know new ones come out every Friday. And finally, Sony has announced their latest flagship camera. And if you think that it's an A1 replacement, it, it's not. It's actually a flagship flagship ZV camera, their more budget-friendly vlogging style offering. So why is it considered a flagship, you may be asking? Well, let me tell you what the specs are. First, it's a full-frame camera. Not only is it full-frame, but it uses the same 12-megapixel sensor found in the more expensive A7S III. On top of that, it has a new AI-powered processor dedicated to autofocus and other new features that the A7S III does not have. Now, I took this new camera out to the professional bowler tour event in Akron, Ohio, and really liked the quality of the footage. Though I didn't like that it doesn't have a viewfinder and that the quality of the LCD screen is still pretty low, but that's par for the course for Sony cameras. But the autofocus was spot on, like, like really good, thanks to the new AI chip. The new built-in microphone takes advantage of the AI technology, and I will say that it was very solid because if I was in back of the camera, it would hear me. If someone was in front of the camera talking, it would switch to them. It sounded really good. The full auto mode worked really well and so did the Peter McKinnon mode that burns cinematic black bars right into your footage. As in, burns in, you can't undo it after you shoot it that way. The image stabilization was fantastic and the high ISO capability is unmatched when it comes to cameras in its price point, especially when it comes to video. You can shoot 4K60 for up to 30 minutes before it overheats and Sony says that they got longer. I didn't test it out because I don't shoot 4K 60. You can do 4K 120 with full one-to-one -one readout, 1080 up to 240p, all with unlimited record time. So what's the difference from the A7S III, you may be asking? A different body, no EVF, no active cooling, not built as tough, one card slot instead of two, and a few other minor things. So what's the price? Well, the ZV-E1 comes in at $2,200, which is $1,500 less than the A7S III. Now, at the end of the day, this might be one of the best vlogging focused cameras on the market. And I do wonder if Canon's gonna try and follow suit or let Sony have the vlogging market. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.